So last week we looked at Genesis 3 and we thought about doubt. We noticed how Satan had planted the seed of doubt in Eve's mind. And Eve began to doubt God. Not whether God exists, but she doubted whether God really meant what he, she, what he said. And so Eve began to doubt God and it led to her eating the fruit. And she convinced Adam to eat of the fruit and there were consequences. Just as God had said, in the day they ate of it, they would surely die. Now I want to think about that story, but I want to consider free will. Somebody might look at the story and think, well, why did God even command them if he knew they were going to break the command in the first place? You know, why did he even plant the tree in the, in the midst of the garden? And so that's just a terrible thing done by God. And if God had not planted the tree, then surely things would have been better for them and things would have been better for us as well today. But I think this is a huge misconception of God and his commandments. Think about it. If it was impossible for us to disobey God, we'd have no other choice but to obey him. You know, if he had not planted the tree in the midst of the garden and gave them that boundary, then they would have had no other choice but to submit to God. But that's not how God made us. He made us in his own image, and he gave us the freedom of choice. And that's what we call free will. And so, in fact, God gave them a numerous of choices, all kinds of options. There are all kinds of trees with all kinds of fruits in the midst of the garden. Uh, but he gave them rule and he gave them choices. And man had the choice to obey God or not to obey God. And we have the same choice today. Now, I want to compare that to a New Testament story in Mark chapter 1. Jesus had just healed a leper. And he gave the leper two commands. He said, in fact, it says he strictly warned him. He, gave, he told him that he was supposed to go to the priest and follow through the law of Moses, as we see in Leviticus 17, the law of the cleansing of, of lepers. And secondly, he said he was to say nothing to anyone. But we see in the text that this man went out and he began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city. And so Jesus says, say nothing to anyone, and he told everything to everyone. And there were consequences he had hindered the work of Jesus in that city. Now, we can look at that story in the same light that we looked at Genesis 3 and say, well, didn't Jesus know that that man wasn't going to obey him? Of course, Jesus knew that. And then why did he command him in the first place? But still, we've got this misunderstanding about God and his commandments. Think about it this way. God does not change or adjust his commands based upon how he knows we're going to respond to them. And in fact, God just tells us the truth. He commands us and we have a choice how we're going to respond. And as creator and ultimate ruler of the universe, he has every right to command us according to his will. And as his creation, we ought not to be completely submissive to. But instead of restricting us to where we have no choice but to obey, he, gives a, he gave us a choice, just like he did Adam and Eve. But thankfully, we serve a God who's in tune with his creation and he knows exactly what we need and what is best for us in our lives. And we can trust him in that. And unfortunately, too many of us, all of us, have chosen to rebel against him. And some of us are continuing to choose choices that rebel against him. And so we ought to be able to see our need for his will just based upon the disaster uh, that when we start to live according to our own will. Mm -hmm.